Hello and welcome to Tales from the Tavern, the Sea of Thieves official podcast. We've got a very special podcast for you today and we're joined by our art team, or loads of people from across the art department at least, um, and we're going to chat all about the Sea of Thieves art book and about art development within Sea of Thieves. I mean, I think a lot of you have been here since the early days, am I right? Yeah, yeah. so. And uh, certainly... Uh, Yourself, Ryan, you, you're you instrumental in making sure the art is in here. Thank you. So we're going to go around, first of all, and introduce everyone. So we get a, the, your name and title, please. We'll start with you, Ricardo. So my name is Ricardo Robles, and I'm Principal Concept Artist in CFTs. Okay. I'm Andrew Finch, and I'm Principal Environment Artist. John McFarlane, Community Video Manager. Um, my name is Victoria Hall, and I'm Concept Artist on CFTs. And my name is Ryan Stevenson, and I'm the Art Director. Sweet. So... Talking about that, let's go all the way back to like when did you start looking at uh, what's way back it? when? Yeah. I think it was 2014. I'm going to guess is the is the date. So yeah, we started a while ago now looking at a new game that we're going to make, and it was pirates. Yes. Mm. And uh, so how when we started off looking at that, what what is that process? Because it's not just um, it's not just concept art. We do build things like build di- dioramas and stuff. What is a diorama? Oh, so a diorama is uh, like a it's a, a little early kind of version of an area within the game. So you, you pick a, a small location. I think it's actually the one of our uh, resource islands in the game is actually that diorama hmm. um, that's evolved and been made game ready as well. And so you make a small little island and you make sure that it's got... Um, as many things as you're going to feature in the game in it. So it's got a character, it's got some foliage, it's got got um, some hard surface and and some of the wood and, and kind of structures that we're going to build. And it tests out all of the look of visuals of those things. So how did we go about kind of investigating what that, that art style would be? Doing lots of drawings. So I'm looking at the concept team here. <laughs> Well, that's not nice yeah. drawing. <laughs> yeah, no, it was about just investigating different materials, different different surfaces, how we treat, like how much detail we put into certain surfaces, how how do we actually paint uh, the textures of these subjects and and characters. So, I remember we. We, we experimented with a wide range of approaches, like more gritty, grittier, a yeah. little bit less uh, flatter textures. And I remember a moment where the um, brush, what's it, like the gritty brush strokes were totally forbidden. Yeah. <laughs> it was all just clean, pure, yeah, pure yeah. kind of like flat colours. Yeah, flat colours with a little bit of colour variation. And it was, yeah, it was a fun, a fun process just to, to experiment with a lot of shapes and, and colours. And, and, and we have conversations from like, realistic to um, super simple so and we explore all of them and then try and as the design team are working out the style of gameplay and the tone of the game we're trying to to find a style that would suit that in all of its different situations so we're quite a comedic game and quite fun and silly where you get fired out of a cannon so it seemed to have a, a playful approach to the visuals as well was the fitting kind of approach yeah it totally makes sense so like when you guys are working on concept art and when you're moving through that process of bringing something like, say, a, a prop uh, to life or an environment to life, like, how much are you restricted by stuff like tech? Like, do you do you ever speak, like, do you have chats with the engineering team and they say, nah, 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 like, we can't go that far? Like, I mean, I'm going to be totally ignorant here and say, like, too many polys, like, there's no way we can do that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. Like, uh, what's what's that conversation like? Uh, we've not really been countering by too many things. Um, I think a lot of the stuff that we have to consider, especially with props, is whether they can fit in their hands because we're constrained to, like, to fit a handshape for a certain type of object. So, say, if it is a compass... You need to make sure you're not doing a compass with like massive things that stick out of the way and it would kind of go through oddly like the fingers. Um, I don't think we've really like had the issue of poly count um, that's ever come up because I think naturally the style is quite, it's not too crazy. Um, You have to make sure there's not loads of detail packed into smaller objects. So naturally they're quite small in detail. So yeah. I think there was also consideration sometimes when when you create like pieces of clothing, uh, considering the silhouette of the character, the silhouette of uh, of, of wherever this this person is is wearing a, a specific hat or something. It needs to go through doors and needs mm. to go through yeah. certain spaces. That you need to navigate through um, mm. the ship, like going in and out uh, the lower decks. So it's always like a space you have to respect. And I was 
don't go too big with a with an mm-hmm. asset or with, yeah, yeah things like that yeah if you had a massive feather you would see yeah. it through the top floor of the, on the top deck for example yeah, yeah. Sure, actually and a lot of the like outfits have to um because they they'll fit to like any body type as well you need to make sure that they won't stretch too oddly mm. like there's certain limitations in what we can do uh but for the majority like we've been able to do quite a lot of things um we've not been limited too much with it and when we're exploring we do do from like crazy ideas to, to simple ideas so we then we can try and work out so we, we're totally free at the start and then go okay what what what's the right approach to do for this mm. yeah i think the technical side of things is more the environment thing to worry about so like mm. we'll get the visual language from concept and then we'll develop that into a 3d world and then we'll explore the technical issues and the constraints that will be put under and things like that to get the image that the concept guys have give us so, mm. so is it quite often that you, you'd see that kind of concept um, start to influence design? Is that a, like, or how much how much is that a balance of just design coming to you and saying, "I need this," and you go away and have to concept it? And how much is it you try and influence? What it's a, a bit of both. So, there's a mixture of um, production based work and obviously inspiration based work. So, I know. Uh, Rick, at the start, you did so many pictures of, of like different environments and, and different yeah, things. Yeah, that's right, key images, yeah. and uh, just to see what what was what felt right as soon as you yeah. uh, see something. It's just like this mm. is what will look cool, or something missing, or uh, it's not mm, it's not showing exactly what we want. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 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 a good example would be the skull cloud. So that was purely a visual thing that we we um, we had the challenge of okay, skull islands. What can Sea of Thieves skull island be? Um, and we didn't want to just do the classic rock fo- formation that was a skull because everyone always does that. So we came up with the idea of having the skull cloud. So it was actually forming out of the atmosphere above above the island. Um, and so that that's an idea that we came up really early on to solve that, that um, ch- art challenge that we wanted to do. And then that's just been sitting there in the background waiting for the moment. And now designer have kind of grabbed hold of that and they're using it in a, a unique way for the game. And that's going to be being made as we speak. Sweet. And I, I guess a massive, I've seen some of the concept art of the environments and stuff. Like we, we talk about art and we talk about the way that props are made and stuff, but lighting is a big part of yeah. that, right? Yeah, and it's huge. Like when you see the, the mood shots that we have and things changing, uh, sometimes changing an environment completely yeah. using lighting. How much of a challenge was that getting that balance right of what the right lighting was for Sea of Thieves? Um, yeah, it's quite a big challenge because you can get too realistic really easily when doing lighting so you, i rely heavily on the concept art to um show that you can exaggerate the colors and the brightnesses and the dark levels and things like that um but yeah it's what what the a big change was because we've got different seas as well so it's making a sunset look different in one sea to another sea so then again we rely on concept to show you different ways of exaggerating certain things to make it look different and especially like things like the wilds as well that was a lot different from bsp about well, blue sea and white sea so um yeah <laughs> it's very challenging <laughs> I, can imagine, and I can also imagine that working we talked and we did a video before um way early i think it was like 2015 i think we did a um an inside story where we talked about like silhouettes and how that plays a big part in how you read the language of the oh, world. Yes. Yeah. Um, so how much did that factor into the the design and the art, like the concept of, of how we worked? Well, it's, it's within everything, really. So because we, we've got a, a fairly refined style, the silhouette and the clean read is, is really important. But um, Victoria's been through many times where we've had discussions around silhouette of objects and when we build it. Yeah, yeah. Because we have like a quite a good style where you want that sort of big uh good like shapes and not too many like messy detail with what you might get with like quite a realistic modern day shooter game or something like that. Um it's quite a nice style to play around with because you could go crazy with some shapes, but then you have to realise you have to tone it back sometimes, like you can get a bit carried away. But yeah, that that's one of the challenges you have to sort of get on board with the style. The silhouettes is something I could be much obliged to every single f- drawing that we, we do, every mm-hmm. single concept. I remember there was something that uh, because you spend quite a lot of time in the in the ship looking at the distance, like the, the silhouette that you see in the, the islands 
like yeah. the silhouette of the islands in the horizon that was something that we explored mm -hmm. quite a lot we did a lot of pages of sil island mm -hmm. silhouettes yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, started just, that way yes to see to see how you know how we could make that island interesting from the distance mm -hmm. so i say i want to go there i want to see what's that i want to see what this massive pike is or i want to see what that um, i don't know round round shape is or whatever you know, so yeah. it's, it's, it was even like silhouettes of the islands from the top down view because mm. when you look down on the map and it was like oh yeah that there's chicken isle that kind of looks like a drumstick <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, that's yeah, I, have, I don't know i think that was uh, meant to be something <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's quite funny <laughs> Uh, it's something that I've explored in the lighting as well. So, like, when you're walking around the islands and stuff, so you still want to use your lantern in the dark areas, but brightening the sky up in the background, you silhouette out all the, the shapes of the rocks and the foliage and the trees and things like that. So it does it does a lot, getting the silhouette just right for the player. So. And I know that when we... We talk about getting influence and design with that sort of stuff. That's stuff we've played around with, with this idea of looking at long draw distances and like how, how we see other ships in the distance and how we see other islands in the distance. It's something we're constantly tweaking, right? Like moving backwards and forwards. These, yeah. these, uh, not necessarily, it's not, not normally draw moving distance. backwards yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to increase the, yeah. Increase it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. we do lots of things like making the ship even more visible at distance and there's, um, like and some of the islands as well, the way that we treat, we pull out information from them and turn them into more of a clean silhouette. So it, it is a cleaner shape on the horizon, so you're more likely to notice it. Mm. Yeah, and adding things like glints off the bell and things like that just to make the, the ship stand out on the, on the horizon all helps for gameplay. <laughs> we have the Art of Sea of Thieves book here, um, which is uh, releasing very soon. So I know quite a lot of you have your work featured in here and in fact everyone in the table has at least something in there right um yeah. so it's a what would you say is your favorite piece in there and why seems like a classic question but like <laughs> good uh, solid question to ask <laughs> <laughs> who's gonna go first victoria um i think like one of the most funnest tasks that i've worked on in there is like uh designing the shops just because i did quite a few of them and i could I think it it worked well because you could you had to sort of design them together to know if they would work separately. So you need to make sure each of the shops, oh yeah, that's the clothing shop or that's the weapon shop site. They're they're instantly recognisable, and for that reason, it was quite fun. But there was also like um, I liked thinking about the shopkeeper as well, and like injecting some sort of like. Um, you could tell how they went about day to day. So say with like the clothes shop, we've got like the pots of ink around the side of the shop and you have like the rack of all the fabrics that have been dyed. It was the, yeah, I just love thinking about things like that. Um, and I got to do it for a few of them. So I quite like that one. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I suppose my favorite one is the, one of the diorama, which was the, I think it's in the environment section where it was the shot of a, a beach with a, a tree. You know, it's quite boring, really, <laughs> um, from, from compared to skeletons and things like that. But it was, the, it was the one picture that I did really early on that brought together the brush style, mm. the distant uh, objects and everything. So it's the one where it all kind of clicked. Mm. So it was like, that was the moment that I kind of went, ah, oh, yes, that's what we need to do. Mm. So that's why it's my favourite. Sweet. Mm. So my favorite, I wouldn't say it's one specific one, maybe just the group of pictures who show the development of the ship, maybe. The early development when we were thinking of how the ship should look like, uh, because we investigated like, how an actual galleon works and how what the features of the galleon are, and then trying to apply that to our style, trying to simplify down some of these features, um, but also still making it obviously entertaining and, 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 and stylized and, and cool to, to navigate through the, through the ship and through different decks. And uh, I think that development was something I enjoyed quite a lot. Mm. I was uh, a fun, fun memories of that. It's a huge test to get yeah. right. Like. You did loads of work on that this year. Yeah, it was really well, good. Yeah. To get it perfect. Because yeah, was, we, was we had our Unity prototype, didn't we? So we had a kind of rough block out. Oh, of, very rough. Of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah, I should say, yeah, very, very, very rough. Like, programmer art style rough of, of, um, of the ship. Um, but it was like it was a functional thing. So you had to then go look at actual, I guess, actual ships. And we and actually see how did. Do we, yeah. How do we, we, we went, to, went to see a ship and then mm. the, the Golden Hind. Yeah, was, the Golden Hind. Uh, yeah. yeah, Golden Hind in London. All the team went there. Yeah, and so I we went, to, went through the deck and kind of looked at all the different environment within it and, and how cramped it was in places. So that's 
that's why we've got that feeling of it getting darker as you go down to make it feel more claustrophobic as you mm. go through the ship. And that's based on that experience of going there. Mm. It's such a huge task of like going back and forth with design as well. Like I remember like how many seconds it takes to sort of get to certain areas and like having to tweak like whereabouts things yeah, need to go. Like shortening the ship a little bit or making it longer, yeah. or maybe just like <laughs> some spaces kind of repurposing some spaces and that's, yeah. that's kind of thing. So yeah, you do think of that amount of work going into it. Mm. <laughs> so much work. <laughs> um, my favourite image is um, there's a shot that's in game and um, it's of the the boat just out at sea. There's no other islands around it and it's just sailing into the sunset and stuff. I think it just sums up the game for me, like you, a pirate on the sea going out, finding an, an adventure and, and exploring and things like that. So it's good. But I also like seeing... The development of the concept art into the into the real world, well, the, the game world, and um, how close it is. Um, yeah, cause I think we've all done a great job of realizing the the visual style and developing that look into the game. I think the book really shows that off. So, yeah, I think like even just from a like very early stage of like me joining here at the kind of early stages while we were just working on the diorama, yeah. it's like it's insane to see that that visual style has held. Like so yeah, long, I was like. thinking about that the other day. I was looking at the development of the of the game, and because I'm doing a, a talk on it soon at GDC, and trying to work out um, to show show the progression. And then I realised the visual style is actually quite the, the development of it was quite compact. Yeah. And we seemed to to we did a a lot of frantic work quite quickly, and then we got it, and then it just seemed to hold all the way through. And sometimes when you're doing this you get to a point where you realise you've got to make some changes to, because the games change fundamentally or there's a, uh, the art style won't support certain features or a certain experience. Mm -hmm. But we just seem to hit on that, that magic moment where it, it just has worked all the way through. Yeah. Mm. And we talked about um, the different, like as you come up through the ship, there's like different lighting conditions from the bottom of the ship to the top. And that I think that's really interesting when I've been speaking to you in the past about lighting zones like, yeah. and how, how those work. Can you explain a little bit about how those... Um, so basically a lighting zone is um, it's just a zone in the world that adheres to a certain set of lighting parameters. And um, so Wide Sea has got its own set, Blue Sea will have its own set in the wilds. So then, and then you've got an overall world set of parameters so you kind of as you sail through each world you blend in and out of these it's all blends seamlessly hopefully and you don't really know what you see it but um you definitely see a difference when you're in wilds compared to blue sea so. and and that is like so we've got like lighting uh like the areas are in things like the tavern and like i don't know if shops have them i don't know if that's well there's post-process volumes yeah yeah, volumes yeah so well. we use those volumes to like make it look interior as well so because it's it's um real world lighting and nothing's baked so everything's real time so it's difficult to do interior lighting um so the post process stuff really helps and we do an odd cheat here and there just to push that it's you're going inside rather than caves are caves a good example, a good example. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so um <laughs> sweet so um the the book itself when we look at all the different um the pieces of content there's some stuff in there that obviously <laughs> isn't um and in, in the game yet but there's yes. like i think there's a big push for stuff especially since i've been seeing this at the start um for the fantastical idea of yeah. the world um obviously the, the skeleton lords on the um, on the front mm. of the cover there but the fairy of the damned is another and if, i think there's a whole chapter in there and like the sea of the damned um yes um, can we? I don't know who was who was involved in, in creating so that. So, see the damned images of uh, uh, Ricardo. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That was uh, that was a bit of a. Uh, well, there's a few from. Yeah, there's from, there's from a lot Jamie of different people involved that, in that yeah, as well. So yeah. Different, uh, but yeah, it was um, an idea of a place where you go when uh, when you when you die, and then um, it's it's just a place where you. You don't stay for a long time. It's just like a place where you stay just for a bit. You might talk to other spirits, uh, but he had to feel and look ominous and interesting at the same time. I wanted want that to be a, a ship, like the ghost ship, pretty much. And then you get to talk to the captain. You get to talk to other spirits, other players, which uh, might be there, kind of uh, just waiting for for the the pass, passing to the to the real world again. 
And uh, it was just kind of, we started looking at shapes, menacing shapes, color, color schemes, to see like when you get into that part of the, the world or that, that otherworldly part of uh, CFTFC is kind of all green or foggy or uh, um, mm. it's kind of scary. You and, have uh, like the nice red candles as yeah. well popping yeah. out that look yeah. awesome. Yeah, I had a nice, a nice contrast there with uh, some red candles and then uh, having uh, uh, some ghostly uh, features which is the mast of the ship kind of float, that broken. It's kind of a, it's a moment it's a moment in it's, it's a moment in time. It got kind of trapped in a bubble. Like imagine like that that ship has gone through through you know massive battle or something. And you see parts of the ship which are blown away, but are still floating in the, in the same place. And mm. yeah, it was it was kind of really really nice um, exploration of that front back. The mm. captain itself, the captain is the person yeah. which is uh, steering the wheel. Yeah, it's got like the wrapped door. in tra- chains as well, isn't yeah. he? Like tied down to the mm. ship, like you can't escape. Or... Yeah, actually, kind of thinking of what's the story behind that. <laughs> well, yeah. Who's that captain and how did it get there and why is trapped there forever? And, and like, is, that, is that punishment? Is that. Yeah. <laughs> <'Cause> that's, <laughs> that's something we do is we expand, like we explore larger than sometimes the need of the game. Mm. So, really, there is this whole kind of visual de- development of, the, of this underworld. As it were, that um, that we build the the world of Sea of Thieves, and then we reveal certain parts of it in the game. But if we ever wanted to explore in there, then there's I think we did some work on the Tavern of the Damned and things like that. So lots of other little ideas and the characters around with that world. And and the book contains you're right, the book contains some things that aren't in the game yet. But the the book also doesn't contain everything we put in the game as well, mm-hmm. because um, when we put it together, it that was a moment in time that was just showing that that part of a development. And since then, we've also added whole new things to the game as well. And that, so it's a, a bit of a peek into the development, really. And that's that's the thing. I think listening to like all of you tell about particular pieces and things you worked on, like a lot of like what you guys do is like influence the lore of the world, right? By just by putting those art assets in there. Like you're telling a story through the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so can, have you got any kind of uh, we we call them areas of interest that we talk about within the world. Um, is is there anything particular that stands out to you that you've you've kind of worked on? You were talking about the shops themselves. Mm, yeah. Um, anything? I think I was working on doing like with the riddle quest. You have like the symbols on like the caves and that are part of like the uh, the, the the riddles themselves. Um, there's a few like. Um, images that I did for it that kind of touched upon some extra nuggets of like lore. I think there was one, I don't know if it's used, but it's um, it's a mermaid one where it has like the different moon phases and like a symbol of a human and then um, slowly a mermaid and then becoming a mermaid to kind of like hint towards perhaps it's a curse or it, yeah, I, I love just doing stuff like that. And there's, there's a few, there's a few things in there that, to kind of make the world feel a little bit more richer. That's, well, that's a great example. There's like this backstory to all the mermaids and everything that mm. um, the concept art team really kind of pulled all together. And it was the challenge of what what would make a unique mermaid for us. Mm. I think it was you that came up with a with the idea of these cursed mm. cursed cursed pirates. As yeah, well. I think I did like a concept of like um, a mermaid that has like it had like the human clothing, uh, but it also had a bit more grotesque but it had like chains wrapped around it as if like (laughs) it used to be human and like a a death at sea had transformed the human into a mermaid um but we we always think about these things when we're doing like things like dark (laughs) (laughs) they are pretty dark the mermaids do get pretty dark (laughs) well yeah i we i love working on tests like that uh like it comes out a lot in when we're doing characters as well but even like with the buildings uh you're always thinking about things like that i know our environment guys love placing um little stories like on the beach and things like they've dragged a a boat on shore and it's fell on top of them and they've died or they're carrying a chest up a steep hill and died of exhaustion and they just love telling little stories throughout the environment so I kind of like that yeah (laughs) (laughs) and even seen some things lately um to do with like the on Thieves Haven it's like up until very recently Thieves Haven was pretty much empty it had some scaffolding and stuff around it but now we seem to have like almost like a ship building facility in there that seems to be destroyed like yeah uh, it's like uh, so it's great to see some of these things get layered on on top of like what's already there and I think that 
when we talk about a game that's continually evolving, as does our world, right? Oh yeah, that, that's always been the plan, to, to keep adding more and more interesting things. Uh, and it's, it's a good way of navigating the world as well, isn't it? So it's like, uh, where's these, oh, it's the place where the ship builds is on it, so you'll know instantly where it is or what the island looks like in your mind. And, mm. yeah, so. It's good to see how the, some of these places evolve. Just we we probably we didn't we didn't draw all that stuff. Like we started with something simpler, and then from in the, in the environment team, they started like, well, what about if we start putting scaffoldings there, or what about if we put another another jetty here, mm -hmm. or like this little corner with something, and it just kind of evolves from from team to team within Rare. So yeah. it's uh, it's not only like all that stuff wasn't hundred percent drawn by us. Like it was we we started with something, and then some some someone else kind of continue the task so so we asked our community some questions um and of course they rose to the challenge <laughs> <It'll be fun>. <laughs> <laughs> um so i apologize uh, for briefly asking everyone questions but it was great to see so many come in in such a short period of time uh they only had a couple of hours to throw them in but uh twitter and the forums jumped to the task uh so we don't have anyone specifically here around character but we do obviously have the concept and you've worked on characters so we had one from uh, Blair K Percival uh, on Twitter who said how did the character designs evolve and what was the inspiration oh so the inspiration really for the character designs that, other than just a particular one was the whole theme of, of how the characters should look within the world came from um, looking at lots of pirate films I watched probably all the pirate films that you could imagine <laughs> even the terrible ones uh and just being really fascinated how sometimes the heroes that were in it were sometimes the dullest characters in it because they had a very mundane story. Whereas the Barbosas of the world, they're the interesting ones because they're, um, they're not always a hero, they're sometimes a villain, the, the, um, the motives aren't always that clear. So it was, that was the, the idea of rather than being Errol Flynn pirates for example, they were going to be dirty, rotten pirates. Mm -hmm. And that is where the whole uh, ethos of them being wonky and dirty and, and kind of... And that ties in so well with uh, pirates drinking grog and, and firing themselves up cannons and being a bit ramshackled. Because mm, pirates are not clean. No. Uh, Hollywood, they're like yeah. really dirty and gross. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was really it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the... Uh, Victoria, you did the merchants as well, didn't you? You designed the, the merchant, the right. merchant company. Yeah, yeah, the lady. Um, uh, that was an interesting task because we were thinking about perhaps that like, she's a character that's come out outside from the Sea of, of Thieves, that she's come into this world, which is hopefully reflected in her clothing. Um, but even with her, you still have the ink stains on her. You, she's not clean and pristine. Uh, character, so no, nothing in this world no. is, is pristine or clean. It's yeah. always like some sort of damage or staining or yeah, yeah. That's one of the, like the major like styles of, of the game when we're thinking about designing props. Um, everything's used like it's got almost like a history behind it. Even like the sort of fanciest of sets has like some sort of chips in them, um, but there's just varying degrees. Yeah. The idea is that Sea of Thieves things have come into Sea of Thieves and then. There's no one making brand new stuff. It's all being augmented mm -hmm. of the things that have come into it. So they all have a history. They're all secondhand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like one of the things that really got me was the idea of the Eye of Reach being this idea of essentially like a rifle with a spyglass yeah. strapped to the top of it. <laughs> um, and I love that idea of like, and I don't know whether that was a design idea. I don't know whether it was a... Um, art to then come I think up. we riffed off a design idea in the sense of when they were putting it into the game they they didn't have a model for, for what it could look like so they, they got a telescope and stuck it to a pistol so it, really, it was in the prototype it really was just that we were like, maybe we need to do something a little bit more like a sniper rifle yeah so that's like it's really cool look what about yourself regarding working on characters have you how did you explore that like well, we, we did a lot of exploration on, on something very simple at the beginning, very cartoony. Then we moved into something a little bit more, you know, like realistic. Then we explore even like really ugly, ugly, super greedy pirates, like super vicious, violent, like mm. something kind of 
just to see the other side, just to see the extreme, to see what works and what doesn't work on that, and then turning it down back into to something which is kind of in a mid range, which mm -hmm. some of our characters, because we have the generator, which is kind of it will give you any type of pirate, right? Really, but uh, the general the general look of the pirates is. You can get a fiery looking pirate, and you can get a silly looking pirate. You can get a, 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 a you know some something which is kind of closer to something you can can, can can call beautiful, maybe like a beautiful lady. Oh yeah, it can. We, can, uh, we, can, uh, we got a uh, hero. It's very unlikely. Classic. It's very unlikely, but you can. Oh get no, we close. can. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, recently we've been uh, playing with the numbers because it's, it's how how the uh, system all works. So I've been making some heroes that look like I would say the classic AAA game heroes. Mm -hmm. um, so the Nathan Drakes of the world. Mm. I, well, we've got some Nathan Drakes <laughs> some recently. Uh, yeah, so yeah, we, we play with it all. So the, the idea is that it was creating the range. So you can have the heroes and you can have the dirt, but they're always got a bit of dirt on them. Yeah, hmm. yeah. We also got another question from Nitron Rob. I hate reading names from people in the community because they're always <laughs> making them super difficult. I mean, that one, was ones that one was relatively easy, but <laughs> some of them are. Um, who designed the gorgeous Sea of Thieves logo and how did they come up with the design? Oh, I designed the original one. Uh, so uh, when we when we announced, we needed a logo. Obviously, we needed a name first. That took a long time. Um, and so I, yeah, I designed the original version of it, which was had more curve in it and had a simplified skull. And then um, and then the marketing team took it further, and we we experimented with that and, and took it even further. But yeah, it was a it was a, a whole group effort. So lots of people have had input into it. And then obviously there's the skull got changed so it would actually feature or it's got our logo where it's made made out of a scene so there's a ship for an eye and there's a characters along the mouth so yeah i remember we did like tons of different schools like yeah. all the team at least each one of us draw a different school to see what school was going to fit into the yeah. logo <laughs> uh what type of school what, what how simplified how how complex how this like and it, yeah at the end one one got yeah. got chosen but it is tricky because there's like so many games use schools Unfairly as well. We're a pirate game. We have to have a skull. <laughs> There's so many other games that use skulls that, um, yeah, we wanted to try and find one that we could like own and make it special. And that's why it turned into an actual scene, a moment from the game. That was the mm -hmm. idea. Sweet. And we're going to try and fire through some of these questions because we don't have much time left. So um, a good one for, for you, uh, Finchie, is uh, will we see further development of the night sky in terms of constellations and such? Um, that was talked about before. Um, I don't know if it's still <laughs> on the planet. Maybe, maybe, maybe. 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 We're always, uh, yeah, we're always yeah. tinkering and making improvements. So. Yeah, but it's one of these things that can change, right? Like, yeah, wherever. it's not nothing. It's not set in stone that it's going to stay like that. But yeah, it's something we can develop further. Definitely, we have got a north star. <laughs> yeah, we've got a north star. We've, we've also got the aurora that comes in at certain times, depending on which sea you're in. So that's another way of. Saying, oh, you're in wide sea because you can see the aurora, mm. whereas in blue sea, you probably can't see it. So, ah. Did, uh, is there a, an eclipse as well? Um, the moon has phases, so it'll go full moon to fingernail moon and things like that. But um, over, over that'll be so cool, days, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that question was from Aeronom3, I'm assuming, unless I'm not speaking correctly in Leet. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we also have from Time of the Year on our forum says when designing the skeletons did you think about what they would look like when they were alive did you want them to look like the skeletons from your human models or did you just focus on making them look interesting well we were talking about this before yeah we were just talking about this so yeah we would um the skeletons kind of fit the the human model when we were yeah. designing it if you put a transparency over the top of a, a standard pirate yeah. they do fit into the same body shape and they use the same rig um so they, they technically can use the same animations. Mm. So when we look at the different uh, skelly variations that, that may come along, we can uh, those we have thought about like, even looking at the, um, the skelly lords. There is history behind those. Oh, we absolutely. Have about the, the They're characters. all pirates that have um, been in the Sea of Thieves and fallen foul somehow to uh, as yet untalked about uh, demise and resurrection. Um, and, yeah, and there were different... Uh, aspects of that that we've yet to talk about really yeah cool and we've got another one from when koalas attack uh, okay <laughs> are we are we going to see <laughs> more added in the un underwater i.e schools of fish yeah. that's currently being added now actually um, more schools of fish um, 
birds, bats, things like that. So, yeah. Yeah, more life in the world. Yeah, so. make it feel like a living, breathing yeah. world. It's great standing on like a jetty looking at the beautiful water, but we've also got the fish swimming around as well next year, so yeah. a lot more interest. Yes, and we um we showed off in the progression stream some of the coral reef stuff we're yeah, working yeah. on. So yeah. yeah, I can imagine we'll get some more light yeah, around there yeah. as well. Yeah, it looked great swimming through the coral and a school of fish swim past you. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Next time you're playing the game, if you swim through the sea, you'll see. Yeah. <laughs> and then get eaten by a shark, which happened to me the other day. <laughs> <laughs> um CNT Thel Rocks, will there be more clothing weapon skin options that are more flashy than others? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was a nice easy one. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> you, and these guys have been drawing them and making them. Oh, yeah, we've it. been drawing lots of different sets that are to come uh, yeah. in the future. Uh, yeah, loads of different themes as well. I don't know if you can say any. No, names. not yet. Okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's lots to come, yeah. yeah. <laughs> really fun ones. That's a variety. That's yeah. a variety. Yeah. There, yeah. Sweet. So whatever type of pirate you want to be, you'll, you'll, you'll be happy. <laughs> Even crazy pirates. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, God. Reto El Baradora. Roda. Oh, El Barra Roda. I don't know. <laughs> Will there be any other assets for the islands other than the tropical one we have now, like a jungle or dark, creepy fantasy? I mean, it feels like he's naming the other two. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, like, wide Sea is quite overgrown, yeah. jungly feel, and Wilds is very barren, decaying, dying type yeah. things. So, yeah. Yeah. So, like, and we, we did explore. Like those three from the kind of start, I remember seeing all three of them. Like when we were looking at oh, there was seven in total when we started. Oh, so lots of all the different ones. Mm. The snow one, the lava one. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to be quite the, the, not not the traditional, no, but really crazy ones sometimes. Cool, and uh, we got two very similar questions as our last questions here from uh, KGMS Highland. Hylian and Ever Ready. Um, so how did you manage to balance the cartoony style with keeping the reality to it so well? Was it planned or did you end up random? Uh, and has it been chosen as it was thought of as the best? Um, and they said, in balance, I mean, for example, the characters are shaped slightly cartoony, but not all overboard. Their skin, lighting, small details like beard, clothing and such is rather closer to being realistic. Instead, it all fits together really well. It was a nice long one. Oh, that's a yeah. long one. Yeah. And it was like, and then the other person said, how easy, difficult was it to keep the style of the artwork consistent across the game? So they kind of summed up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my job. Yeah. <laughs> I've kind of, I, I, we do reviews every single week, making sure everything's coherent um, uh, and, and looks all on tone. So that's the, the, the after the initial start of the project where you, you develop the visual style and test what it looks like within the diorama and, and build everything um, you do the job that turns into making sure that every new thing is consistent and if mm. anything new comes in, any new material gets added to the world, the concept guys like spend time like looking at what that would look like or trying to bring it together. Um, you make a lot of ortho sheets as well, which is... Yeah. <laughs> so what is that for people who might not know? Um, an orthographic sheet is a sheet which will uh, have a different front views, side views, back views of of a single object. So a modeler can take that um, sheet um, and use it for reference for when they're actually modeling in a software. So like some modelers will like put it onto planes if they're using like Maya, that's again a bit technical now, but just as guidelines so they know where things go. Um, We review a group. Along all the stages, Mm -hmm. every single time. So from concept to the 3D to the final texturing. And even like when I remember when I first joined the project, I remember like sitting down with you and you went through the presentation deck of like your sort of like guidelines of the style. And it's important if if we do ever have someone new on the team to kind of sit down with them and, and kind of give them like a crash course of the style. But even then, it, it it does take a while to get get used to it, especially depending on what project you might have come from. So you might have been doing something quite cartoony or stylized and naturally maybe your style like gravitates to that and um, so it takes a while but you, you get there eventually and the, the team supports each other in uh, getting it right so how like i can't leave the podcast without asking because so many people asked about it um in the in the questions and previously the water um yeah how did we balance that how did we make sure the water felt like it was in the world with this kind of because the water does at sometimes look photo real yes um yeah so that 
That's funny that you should ask that. Um, it really early on, it was we, would, we obviously had really we had good water tech in the studio before we started on um, from Connectsports Rivals, and we were looking at um, obviously as soon as we knew we were doing a pirate game, we'd be using a, a similar approach to doing the water, and so straight away we were looking at how we could stylize it. But what I found was um, that if you push it too far in any particular way, it doesn't feel like water anymore. It, it just feels mm -hmm. like a plane that's. Um, jittering around so it, it didn't feel right and if you look at a lot of animated films they do exactly the same thing where the water and the, those elements they they are real but they sit within the world uh, be that through the color that we use and the way that it lights i know that you bounce yeah, it, finish, have, bounce yeah. A lot of light, <laughs> i've got a lot of control over the the color of the sea and how the light hits it and stuff and lights it from the back and things like that so it's, it's easy enough to keep it on style. I think the foam helps yep. give you that 2D sense to it. The effects within the water yeah, as well, like splashes yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, a, it's all just a balance. Everything is just such a, a, a tricky balance, but that's why we did it this way. We wanted it not to be super realistic and not to be super cartoony, but just something that could bring so many different tones and so many different experiences to the players. Mm -hmm. So in short answer to Ever Ready, how easy, difficult is it? Difficult. It's very that's difficult. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you very much, guys. That comes to the to the end of the, the podcast. But um, obviously, this is a regular series that we're doing all the time. We've just previously um, had a podcast um, last week where we, we talked with uh, some other members on the team. And we'll continue to do that all the way up to launch and beyond. So March 20th, like keep your keep your schedule free for a full day of Sea of Thieves and hopefully continuing after that. But um, Remember, hashtag Tavern Talk if you want your questions answered on any of the podcasts we do. Again, apologies, this one was slightly late in terms of asking for the questions, but we got plenty of really good ones. And remember, the Art of Sea of Th Thieves book is available for pre-order. It's got amazing work by all these oh, guys yeah. sitting around the table here and many more at the studio. So jump on to uh, seaofthieves.com to pre-order it. And uh, yeah, we'll see you all next time. Thank you. Bye. 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 Pre-order now to receive the Black Dog Pack when the game launches.